So welcome everyone to another episode of Grip Sport Latino. Today we have the honorable guest, the founder of Gods of Grip, Mr. Tom Lima. What you, you pronounced it right as well? <laughs> was it good? Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because because in the past I had like a, oh this is, it, you are not pronouncing it well and yeah, anyway. Do you prefer Tom or Tommy? Yeah, it's I get both. I prefer Tommy myself, but most people call me Tom. Perfect. Well, my name is Francisco, but I prefer Pancho. Everyone yeah. knows me as nice. Pancho, so uh, that's perfect for me. I like to start with the the classic question, the opening question of uh, this podcast. Tell me, Tommy, who is Tommy Lemath? Well, I feel like I'm just quite a regular guy, really. Um, I've always sort of been into sports and stuff like that. And, you know, I sort of fell into like rugby, strongman, you know, that kind of thing, because I'm quite a big lad. I was always into sports that were quite physical, I guess you could say. Um, and yeah, just enjoyed sort of working outside and stuff like that and being outside. It's just quite active. So I guess, you know, that sort of led me into just sport, a sporting sort of career, let's say, kind of thing, where I've always enjoyed working outside with sport. Strongman was like my passion growing up, you know, being young. And then I've kind of dwindled into grip as I've got a bit older, and that's where I've sort of developed more of a passion for that kind of thing. Perfect. Tommy, how old are you? I'm 34 now, yeah. You look younger, man. I, Thank you. Thank I, you. Yeah. I, got a, I am, a little baby face. Yeah, I, I am 31. And I was yeah. wondering because, well, let me confess that uh, I saw a, a recent photo of you with David Horn. Yeah. And yeah. you are all, almost like through the roof, man. It's like, how tall is this guy? Because yeah. I, I, I have the notion that David Horn is like maybe six foot or something yeah, like that but... just over six foot yeah yeah and how tall are you tommy six foot six wow yeah so i think it's 198 centimeters super yeah. tall yeah <laughs> oh. yeah and and which is your current uh, weight class for competitions i'm 128 kilos at the moment so open perfect yeah well wow. Man, if we ever meet in person, you you, you will find me super tiny. <laughs> I, I I am under six, like five eleven, and no, no, uh, it's not bad. Uh, and ninety five kilograms. So, yeah. <laughs> but you know, and tell me, uh, well, uh, how, what do you do for a living? I mean, is Gods of Grip your full occupation, or do you have another yeah. another ones? Yeah, since uh, I think it's been about 18 months now, it's been my full-time job, which is crazy, really. Um, it started back in 2018. I think that's a similar time to when you got into grip as well. I'm yes. sure I've seen you say that, yeah. So maybe something that year inspired us all to get into it. I don't, I don't know, but yeah, 2018 I started, and it was one of them where I just enjoyed training it and... There wasn't really much information around grip back then. You know, it was very still very, very niche. And um, it was difficult to find equipment and stuff to train with. Like, there was pretty much Iron Mind, and that was it, really. Um, so I just started, you know, I bought, obviously, a Rolling Thunder and a few captains of Crush Hand Grippers and enjoyed doing plate flips, those kind of things, <laughs> you know, the classics. And then just started making stuff in my shed <laughs> and just, I just love sort of trying out different things even with like you know bits of old pipe you could make a wrist roller with a bit of rope um and yeah the gods of grip I just sort of did it on the side of my current job which I basically was a content writer for different companies so I'd write blogs and stuff like that um and yeah it's just kind of grown from there slowly over the last what is it now nearly six years yeah <laughs> I, I was like watching the the whole Gods of Rip Instagram and I I almost forgot that you used to have like a school logo with the flames. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. that was one of the, the originals. And yeah. I was like, whoa, the, the the one that you have today, it's like a, 
super professional. It's like, yeah. oh man, this yeah. you, you had a couple of rebrandings along the way, and that's, that's it. like, man. yeah, it's just that's it. It's learning because I've done it for quite a while. I've sort of learned along the way. Like my, you know, I'm all about flames, skulls, you know. So I was like, right, I want a skull that's flaming and then say gods of grip. So I was like, yeah, that's what we'll do. But practically, it's not really that good to put on like branding and stuff like that. It's a bit <laughs> complicated. So now it's just super, super basic. Just the word, basically, yeah. Speaking speaking about uh, the schools, I remember watching the your school chalk ball and I was yeah. like, man, that one is super cool. And I was like figuring out Uh, maybe it has some like some metal on the base or how yeah, yeah. how did he make it and and I was like that one looks super great and and I have like a, the the challenge to make one myself in the future a chart ball not 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 me and I, I don't know how to do like the school one but to have a yeah. chart ball it's like oh man I always remember it's... God's of Grip has the school like <laughs> And, and yeah. it, it looks like a human sized skull. Like if, it's huge. Like, I've got John to bring it over. I can bring it it's, over. It's like oh. a like a true head. <laughs> yeah. It's huge. Here we go. <laughs> can sit in my it's like it's here. it's like <laughs> you can, it's it's like the, the face of, it's of like, one of you your can see it's... <laughs> Uh, of one enemy, uh, one of your enemies. Like <laughs> yeah. this is what happens when you mess with God's of Grip with Tommy. <laughs> But it, yeah, everyone loves the short ball. Um, it's sort of been like quite iconic at competitions. Yeah. You know, people have taken pictures with it and stuff, which is mad. But we've actually just made three more for the upcoming competition that we've got as well, which is pretty nice. But do you make it like for to to have like equipment for the competition or for anyone who wants to buy one? Yeah, we've not made any to sell yet. I think we'll keep them to ourselves just to it's like a little yeah. Something yeah, just from yourself. That that's yeah, that's amazing. We we could always send you one of the skulls out to <laughs> make your own. <laughs> no, but we can discuss that later, but yeah. before before we we I, I mean, I wanted to cover like a, a more of your personal story to start. Uh, you yeah. mentioned rugby and strength sports yeah. while growing up. Being yeah. in high school, uh, were you always like a strong guy, like uh, into yeah. doing, I don't know, arm wrestling or wrestling <laughs> your teammates? How was it? Yeah, there was all, I was always like a really big guy. And, you know, even... I was one of those, I was like massive, but I never really had the drive to sort of do really well. I was always so laid back about it. So I'd, I'd cruise through almost. Um, but with the rugby, it was just, it's so much fun. And because at that time I was a lot bigger, I was quite good at it naturally for like my age group, let's say. It only sort of levels out once you get to, you know, like 18, 19, everyone kind of catches up then. So it's more even, but at a very young age, it was just fun. And yeah, I've always just loved rugby and my school was very sports orientated. So we'd play like rugby, cricket, you know, all kinds of things. Um, but yes, it was good fun. <laughs> is it is it regular like in high school in the UK that everyone plays rugby? It's either rugby or football. And and which is more massive over there? It's definitely the football. Yeah. Really? Rugby is more yeah, yeah. Rugby's like yeah, it's not as I don't know what how you'd say it really. There's certain pockets of the country that'll play rugby and then ninety oh. percent football. Yeah. Well, here in Chile it's like ninety nine percent football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a small yeah. small percentage of British high schools. They all yeah. play rugby and it's crazy, isn't it? I, and well, uh, people like uh, uh, they play both sports, of course. But yeah. the ones who are like into rugby, man, they <laughs> most certainly go to the uh, national team and yeah. do some like the matches and etc. Actually, yesterday there, there was a rugby match here in Chile, like in the national stadium. Uh, What the time? rugby team. What? Is Versus it league? Or, do you know what it is? Is it league or union that you play? I, th I it... think it's union. I think it's yeah, union. yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. And, and it was like Scotland versus Chile, 
Amazing. And, and, and Scotland crushed Chile team. Really? <laughs> but, but yes, they, they play rugby here as well. So uh, I know that, well, in rugby, you have to lift weights. Yes, yes. or yes. It, Def- it's not like yeah. football. In football, some, some people like in high school level, they get away without uh, doing any strength. Do you, yeah. Did you have to start like weightlifting at a young, young age? Yeah, that, that was it. It got quite competitive, really, as well. Um, we had like quite a small gym, so we'd go at like lunchtime. We'd go up to the canteen, have your lunch, and then it's like, right, let's go and see who can bench press the most in the gym, oh. kind of thing. And I remember there was always a pec deck, you know, one of those where you you're out wide and you're coming in. So it was always like, right, who's going to get the most on the pec deck today? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I feel like we're always training chest. Like typical, you know, young lads when they first get into the gym, it's all like, right, let's get on the bench and get a massive chest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that was, but yeah, it was. And we, the team that we had at the time was really good. So we got to go to a lot of competitions around the country and, um, you know, to go to a lot of places, which was good for me to sort of learn about different, parts of the country and do different tournaments like we ended up going to France doing a tournament there which was really cool um but yeah it was quite a big part of my life really I'd say thinking about it now yeah and thinking about that you were like eager to hit chest with, yeah. with your friends <laughs> yeah. uh, which are you like uh, before getting into grip like in your rugby days uh, which was your your best bench in squat and deadlift in example you know to, what, my... to see how strong were you before getting yeah. into grip yeah so my squat was probably the best uh, because i've got quite short legs but i've got really quite long arms so my bench wasn't oh. wasn't that great what's it was three and a half plates is the best i've ever done so what's that 160 on bench Right? Sounds and like it, was, yeah. Yeah, and it was 280 squat is the best I've done. 280 kilograms? Yeah, kilograms, oh. yeah. Yeah. Huge. Uh, and my, only my best deadlift is less. I think that was 265. So not and, massive numbers, but, you know, it's all right. But but they are like above average numbers. And Yeah, uh, I, was, I always enjoyed doing squats because you needed it for like the scrum and stuff like that because I was second row, so... I was always, you know, getting in the rock and malls and stuff like that. And just in like, th- there's this like a uh, joke in the powerlifting community. Did you pull sumo or conventional? Conventional back in the day, but now I pull sumo. <laughs> but sumo for 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 training deadlifts or for your axle and Saxon bar? That's it. Now it's all sumo for axle and yeah Saxon. Yeah. Is it is it like uh, I mean I wanted to ask you why because I see the majority of people pulling on sumo for the accent axle and saxon and I just yeah. tried a conventional style so is it like a, a big advantage while the, if you do it like that Yeah I feel like you get get your hands in a better position so uh, obviously when you're doing conventional your arms are on the outside of your legs so you've got quite a wide grip whereas if you do it Uh, sumo you can move your hands quite closer together and you can almost lock your lats in a little bit better so when your hands are closer especially on the saxon bar you want your hands to be quite close together i will have to try that that technique because here here we i built a saxon recently and we all tried like the conventional version so maybe maybe with the sumo we can we can add some kilograms yeah i think so the bar (laughs) Yeah, it definitely helps with wrist flexion as well. You can sort of flex your wrist into the bar, but get a little tilt at the start, and I think it'll definitely help you. Excellent. Yeah. And tell me, how did you get into grip? How did you know yeah. about the sport and, and all that stuff? It's quite a funny one, really. Um, we used to go to a strongman class once a week, every Saturday, at a local gym. Um, and we were probably there for a year. And then suddenly the guy was like, right, we're going to do a bit of grip training today. And I was like, oh, come on, what's this all about? <laughs> and he set us up like a little plate flipping medley. Um, it was like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And I really enjoyed it. <laughs> That's sort of what spurred me on into it. Uh, it's Stuart Scott, the guy's name is, who actually competed at one of our competitions last weekend with his nine-year-old daughter. So she's into it now as well. 
but yeah, it's him really that got me into it. Just with that little plate flip medley, I was I just enjoyed it. I I did I completed. It. I was like, oh, cool. What else can I kind of do in this area? So yeah, that's that's how it all started. And so this was in 2018, right? Yeah, yeah. This could, it might be towards the, the latter end of 2017. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, it's yeah. it's more that it's our our uh, like uh, grip origins are more like uh, alike because in December 2017, I bought my first loading pin, rolling handle, and I, also I had a pinch block and a bar, like the yeah. the basic bundle of yeah, grip but, starters. Yeah, it's crazy that, but yeah, just so, something so simple that can pique an interest almost, isn't it? And then you get stuck right into the rabbit hole of grip. Exactly. I want to know today, Tommy, which are your best uh, grip fits, uh, meaning uh, regarding to the inch dumbbell, blobs, yeah. uh, pinch block and hub? Yeah. Blobs are my favorite lift and mainly pinching as well. It's something that I really enjoy. I think strong thumbs help a lot with that and quite long hands as well. So That definitely helps. But yeah, it's an interesting one, really, with the Thomas Inch Dumbbell. It was something that obviously first bought it off Nathan Hall maybe two years ago, got the first 78 uh, kilo dumbbell. And I was able to lift it first time, which is very lucky. But I trained a lot of axle, which is definitely going to help your inch lifting. And um, yeah, I've done like a, a nice level lift with two beer cans and had like a sip out the beer can at the top and lowered it back down. That's probably the best lift with an inch that I've done. Uh, I've done a transfer as well, which was quite cool. But that's pretty much it with the inches. Um, it's mainly with the blobs that I really enjoy doing stupid things. Like we have, we're lucky enough to have two full sets of the legacy blobs, which are the ones with the slightly smoother side and then the big curved side. So Um, that's something that I've become really good at because we always take them to competitions with us. It's quite funny, really. So I'll always load them into the car when we go to the competitions. It's like a 50-meter walk with the blobs. So I'll carry them all to the car, take them to the competition, then load them back. So I just feel like I've grown this mutant blob strength kind of thing. Um, And do so you carry them like this when you get yeah. them from the yeah, car? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, so it's like a bit of a joke to... now, uh, you know. Um, and we'll, we bought some magnets recently to stick on the blobs to yeah. add a bit more weight, which is you might have seen Fat Muscle doing them in his gym. Yeah, yeah, the legend. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Blobs, they're just really cool. We need to get some heavier ones. I know the in America they have like ones that weigh nearly uh, 30 kilos, something like that. Yes, I, I remember well. Half hundred and ten, half hundred and twenty, yeah. from the legacies. Which which half has been your your best lift to have a reference? Well, yeah, it's funny because in the USA they have it's obviously pounds, and in the yeah. in the UK it's kilograms. So the ones oh. in the UK only went up to 50 kilograms. So the heaviest oh. legacy blob we have is 25 kilos. So I've lifted that with two fingers and the thumb, uh, oh. which is quite a good one i don't know i can pretty much do everything with it it's like my speciality lift really on the blob and um, i need to work on getting the whole 30 up which is going to be a big challenge excellent and yeah. oh i for i forgot an important one which is your best gripper close oh like your record yeah, yeah it's one 184 rgc Ooh. yeah i can't remember i think it was Uh, a GHP gripper but yeah it's a foot like with hand grippers it's a love-hate relationship I feel like we'll go through cycles of like right I'm going heavy on the hand grippers now I love them and then I'm like, oh, I hate hand grippers so I think it was 2022 I did try to do a challenge where I closed hand grippers every day for 30 days and it just burnt me out <laughs> so pretty much didn't use them for a maybe eight months after that, but now I'm slowly getting them back in now. I'm up to about 165 now at the moment, so I should be able to get back up to the top again pretty soon. 
Sometimes I well I I can show you a picture of my of my pegboard on on the gym yeah. because I have like like 25 grippers they are oh, all nice. like captains of crash and standard from canon and yeah. on good days I watch the collection and I am like oh this is a good investment I had to yeah. spend like $50 each gripper to to have all yeah. of these and to host the competition and when the performance is bad it's like oh I am wasting my money why yeah. did I have I 30 of yeah. these <laughs> yeah. oh, no. that's, that's like, what yeah. I like yeah man it's like a love head relationship and on those days what i do is like i invite some members of the team i hey guys would you like to close some grippers and they are like like kids in on christmas like wow yeah. so many and they i, I and, and then i feel like eh, this is this is for the community not not just for me so it's uh yeah. it, it is worth it <laughs> <laughs> that's the best mindset that's what i try to think as well it's like oh i'll just buy a couple more i can squeeze a few more on the board and it's like someone i'll enjoy closing them that's the best way to do it that's why we bought loads of inch dumbbells as well it's like everyone can have a go on them they're not just me <laughs> exactly yeah. uh, tommy when you started uh doing grip in 2018 uh, how was grip sport in the uh, in the uk which uh, tournaments did you had how was it yeah, the only one uh, was David Horn. Um, he ran the British Grip Championship since, I think it was 1991, he started that. So David was sort of my first point of contact for all things Grip because, you know, he's like the grandmaster of it in the UK. Um, so I think my first competition was at the British Grip Championships in 2019 with David, which was a great experience. There was... A load of like international people there. I think like Stefan Falk, um, Serco Peterman, Patricia. It was and Jerome Bloom. You know, there was loads of people that have been doing it for a long time that I got to meet. So Fat Muscle was there as well, Sam, uh, which was crazy. So that's sort of where I met a lot of people. And unfortunately, that was the last year that David ran it because, yeah, I think he just started getting into other things. You know, I think he's quite into his books now and stuff like that um so yeah there's probably a couple of years after that and I was like I really want to sort of compete and get people involved in this so that's when we started thinking well let's host a competition let's see if we can get people involved in this and we hosted our first one in the summer it was glorious weather we had a barbecue and lifted some weights and it was amazing so that sort of like let's keep doing this and we did so that that that's one of my my next questions as well. I want to cover it too in, in detail. Uh, but I am super curious about your Instagram name, the Grip Father. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to know um why the Grip Father? It's yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I really don't know. One of my friends at work used to make a lot of t-shirts and he had he had one called the Golf Father because he played a lot of golf. And I was oh. like, oh, I think I'll call myself the Grip Father then. And it was available. So, yeah, there we go. I wasn't really too much of a father back then. I was only 27, so still young. But I can, I'm getting towards that end now where I can kind of <laughs> hold the accolade all right. <laughs> I, I, I thought it had anything to do like with The Godfather, the movie, maybe? <laughs> well, no, no, it's just that his T-shirts, he made like, the golf father, the tea father, he made all kinds of weird t shirts. And I was like, I think I'll be the grip father. Excellent. Yeah. I want to, well, he, here in Chile, the, the, the team, they they have like this joke, well, where if you have like, a, if you're stronger than than your, your teammate, it's like you are the uncle, you know? Oh, and, okay. And, and guys started calling me like, uncle grip <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I, I mean in in spanish of course like tío yeah <laughs> because it's like a, i i am like the like oldest in the sport than them i, yeah. I am pretty sure that the the young talents and the newcomers are going to maybe surpass me in the future but right now i, I am still the uncle <laughs> yeah <I like laughs> so that. it's like i could be the the, the grip uncle someday that, that, I, like that. That. <laughs> I like that it's a good one Tell me, uh, so there was this space uh, between like David, like uh, stopping the, the hosting the competitions and the uh, like the creation of Gods of Grip. When do you 
give that step to oh let's do gods of grip what was the origin yeah i think um yeah i don't know i just i really thought i wanted to document my journey really on this weird sport that i've sort of felt like i almost discovered because i've never heard of it before and if, if you go on google and type in how to train grip there'd be nothing on there so i was like i'm gonna sort of try and write training tips for people to to learn about how I'm doing it and how I'm sort of increasing my strength and maybe some of the tools that we're making that people can make at home and find useful. Um, and then, yeah, it just sort of went from there. I was like, well, I, I want to get some, some things that are going to help me, but then I can also, you know, provide them for other people as well, let's say. So it, we sort of naturally progressed into hosting competitions with our stuff because I wanted more people to use it and get more people into the sport. So I think the first competition we had, we, we still had like 15 people here, which is, you know, a, a massive amount really. And we didn't know anyone really then, but since then we, we still hang around with those people. You know, we've made really good friends in the sport and we've almost built like a community of people together that now is, it's really competitive now. We, we still have the fun competitions. Like we have one at Halloween that's, you know, there's cobwebs and blood everywhere and it's just a bit of fun, but then, We have the Grip League, which is quite serious and it's going to get really competitive as well. So, yeah, it's just I really enjoy hosting competitions because I feel like we can get so many more people involved and expose them to this crazy sport that is actually going to benefit them in the main sport, I guess you could say. Um, like, I know we get a lot of strong men. Have you heard of Paddy Haynes? Of course, the yeah. I, I mean, he he was he used to be uh, a student of Sam, so yeah, I, yeah. So he it, told yeah. me about him, like uh, he is coaching as well, and yeah. he told me to to interview to interview Patty in the future as well. So yeah, I know definitely. Him. Yeah, he's like the perfect example. Really, we first discovered him at a strongman competition, and uh, we were like, oh, he's you know he's got big hands, he's strong, so he's like the perfect guy to get involved in grip and. He already quite enjoyed it, but we sort of partnered up then. He became one of our athletes and we've sort of used him to test out different products. And he's been so good for pushing grip in how important it is in strongman because it is crucial, really. And he coaches loads of top level strongmen now in their grip, which is great. Excellent. And when you wanted to make the sport bigger in the UK, yeah. Did you have like the, the name in mind, like the gods of grip name in advance or was it something that uh, came up later? Yeah, it came pretty quick. I was like, I'm always kind of along this, I, I, you know, I like, yeah, I guess like Greek mythology kind of into that thing, flames and skulls. And it was just like the gods of grip. It sounds cool. And we sketched out a few little different ideas in the notepad and the name came pretty quick uh, and then obviously I checked is like the website available can I get the Instagram domain I was like all available let's there, there it is gods of grip let's get the logo with the flames and the skull and then yeah it was uh, yeah it's a, it is a good name I'm really happy that we went with it and after having like the name the the idea the the domains available uh, which was the first thing that you like your first pro products Were those like grip tools or or the clothing line, which is super cool? Yeah, yeah it was t-shirts and like tiny little grip rings. <laughs> so this is like pre-COVID. So we bought these little tiny grip rings from China and it was dead, you know, ridiculously cheap. I think I paid like 70 pounds for maybe, a, you know, 200 of these rings and we'd sell them on eBay and stuff and use them at home and t-shirts And then, yeah, it was like, let's get into making some proper grip tools, really, because while the accessories are good, I've got all these crazy ideas for things that we want to make. And, you know, it's just kind of gone from there, really. Because I wanted to mention that, well, when I was in my honeymoon, like back in February, uh, one day I was like scrolling or watching grip content and I ended up uh, going into Gods of Grip 
And it was like the first pop-up message. It's like, which is your sport or what are you looking for? And I oh, saw yeah, yeah. jujitsu, arm wrestling, strongman. And it was like, yeah. wow, this is so professional. And then I entered <laughs> to your to your web page, and it was like nice. a huge inspiration for me. Like, man, this, oh, God. He, here you can find everything you need. Yeah. You don't need anything else. If like <laughs> in example. If I were in the UK and I found out about the Gods of Rip, I think I, I would be like, okay, I I wouldn't like wonder what's in the US or in Russia or in other countries. <laughs> like oh. here is everything because you had the blobs, you had the Saxon, you have the inch dumbbells, uh, you have uh, your own grippers. So there are many products and it's a super interesting yeah. like um, variety of uh, possibilities, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It's just been like a really, it's because it's been such a, it feels like a really long process, almost like six years. It's sort of, because it's sort of just been me and my partner, like my partner, Laura has been like such a massive help. You know, she's, she used to package all the orders, wrap everything up, put stickers on, all that stuff. And it's just been us two sort of, there's not been like a big investment into buy a load of stuff. It's just been, let's just make some things and then slowly keep adding things over time. And, I've sort of enjoyed learning how important grip is in different sports. Like obviously coming from strongman, I know how important it is, but learning about climbing, uh, even Ninja Warrior. Like I, I used to go to a Ninja Warrior gym with a guy called Henry Cookie and learn about how to do it, even though I'm like, you know, nearly 130 kilograms trying to swing round and learn how these different types of grip are all sort of interlinked with each other. Even arm wrestling now, I've been arm wrestling since January. It's a completely different type of grip. And I just like to try and make things that are going to help people in different areas. And it, it just expands us as well. And I just enjoy meeting different people from all different areas, really. Super good. And <laughs> well, going back to the uh, to your grippers, uh, I don't remember uh, the name. Well, it's like Elite Series or correct yeah, me if yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah. Do, do, do you have them in your competitions, like with the, like in American competition with the block set or something? Do you contest grippers on the summer league? So this is the grip league final, which is two grip. weeks yesterday. It's the first time that we're actually using hand grippers in competition. Um, it's always been a weird one where I feel like not many people in the UK like hand grippers. Like seriously. Mm. Yeah, honestly, it's so weird. The, we'll find it's sort of the go-to product for people that are brand new into grip. They like getting, you know, the plastic adjustable hand grippers or like a 100, 150 pound hand gripper. And there's not that many people that are like serious about it. Like I know you've got Nathan Hall, who's obviously closed the number four, but I can't think of anyone else in the UK that's really good at hand grippers. I know Sam is pretty good at hand grippers, but apart from that, there isn't really anyone that's, you know, any good at hand grippers. It's so weird. But if you look in the US, you've got hundreds of guys that are, you know, crushing all kinds of ridiculous numbers. So it's a weird one. And this is why I put it in. I'm like, hand grippers are part of the sport. It's, you know, it, it's where everyone sort of gets into it. So we've put them in this time and they're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> Perfect. And yeah. I I think uh, I saw that you you also rate grippers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just have a nice little rating machine that you know it comes up with a little digital scale, and I've actually just rated every single one on the board for the competition and now. So the elite level seven, which is uh, like uh, the rating, like the average rating of that one. Oh, what is it? Uh, I think it's about one sixty eight, something like that. So, so I think it's, it's just above it's above a three and a half captains of crush. Yeah. Yeah. Super good. And I was watching like a, uh, doing a fast scrolling uh, through the leaderboards and I couldn't yeah. find like a, who has closed the number seven. I mean, I can think of Sam and yeah. Jalen Worley recently, but uh, yeah, it's yeah. like a word list where uh, we can see who has closed the, like the biggest elite group yeah. gripper. Yeah, yeah, I think there is somewhere. Yeah, we're working on a new leaderboard at the moment, which is something that I feel like is really important because we are hosting so many competitions now. It's pretty much one a month, um, 
we needed something more uh how do I put it like easy easy to navigate let's say where because we've got so many products and there's so many different weight classes people I just find people scrolling forever so we're working like a web app basically where people can filter by like I guess nation weight category by whatever piece of equipment so it'll be much easier to sort of navigate through everything like you said you couldn't find it so hopefully you won't be able to find it yeah and do you manage the web page yourself tommy or do you work with someone else to like to do the web development or something like that yeah it's just me that does it it's sort of again it's just been a big learning process um like we first started on wix and <laughs> it's the worst website you've ever seen in your life Ooh. it was just terrible honestly <laughs> And then uh, we moved on to WordPress, which again was like another learning process for me. And then obviously Shopify came quite big, dead easy to use. So moved over to Shopify. And since then, it's been quite easy to sort of just keep building little bits every now and again. And another question about the, like the company. Um Do you build like the grip tools yourself or do you have someone who works with you? Yeah. Yeah. We have a guy who literally it's about half a mile down the road on a farm that makes everything for us. Perfect. Yeah. Because I, I had that question because sometimes I see your stories and we can see like the paintings and I yeah, was yeah. like, Oh, maybe Tommy does, does them and the rolling handles or something. But yeah. Uh, so we, yeah, we make all the stuff on the farm down the road Uh, I'll pick it all up, bring it back here to our like sh it's sheds, basically. Then I'll clean, you know, a few bits off, make sure everything's all right, paint it all, dry it all, and then we have a guy now that packages everything for us, so he does all that. Excellent. So, some of the of my followers, uh, well, I had this question myself uh, because, well, I think it was last year that I had an interview with Sam. And I asked him about David Horn and yeah, yeah. Uh, like to know a little more about him. And he told me that he was like a sort of passing the torch to got some grip <laughs> to you, you know? So this yeah. section uh, will be called like following the, the legacy of David Horn. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so uh, is he like, uh, I mean, I, I want to interview David in the future, but is he like retiring for from grip manufacturing uh, and stuff or is it like a hiatus how how is it yeah so me and i feel like i've learned so much off david you know over the last few years i'm i'm always picking his brains asking him questions and stuff and he's been nothing but you know so nice to me and it's been really nice learning from him you know he's only an hour down the road from me so i try and go and train with him every now and again he's just recovering from a foot injury at the moment so he's not as mobile um but he's been doing quite a lot of arm wrestling which is good he's sort of been trying to we've been learning a few bits off him and just all the grip stuff he has so much history in his shed it's just such a cool place to go and he's so welcoming and nice um but yeah i owe so much to him just learning off him and that but now Yeah, he sort of passed the torch on to us. Like, we have the British Grip Championship Shield now, which we're going to start doing again from next year. So that'll finally be back. I think it'll be after six years, it'll be back. So that's a good one to host. And obviously, I feel like his grip tools were, you know, they're so anti-cheat and they're so well-made sort of thing now. And so many people have them already. We sort of have to carry on making those things. So we're making them now for him and you know obviously we've worked a deal out which is good for both of us let's say uh, so I'm happy to make his things because they are the, like the part of the British history and we have to keep using them and keep them in competition so yeah David he's coming to referee at the competition as well soon so I want to try and keep him involved as much as he can and you know go and train with him and just keep learning from him so In the future, if, if we want some uh, David Horn Words of Grip uh, tools, uh, you are going to have like the license, like to produce yeah, them yeah. from now on, yeah. right? Yeah, we've been making everything, up, but the horn tops I think might be discontinued or slightly changed um, because you can't get the the cone things anymore, unfortunately. So that's the only thing that might have to slightly change, but everything else will be the same. And do you have any uh, any in stock or are they like uh, all sold right now, the horn tops? 
All the horn tops have gone. Yeah. Oh, I wanted I know. one. Oh. I know. We made, I think it was 34, and they just disappeared, uh, which oh. is crazy. But we put them in a competition as well, so I shouldn't have done that really, but we did. <laughs> because because we always share some some messages and reels with Harley Fuller from the yeah, 83 yeah. class, and he was like yeah. uh, lifting on the horn top, and we were like uh, going back and forth, like, oh, this is a little, little big horn. We lift like... I don't know, 90 kilos on this and horn top looks yeah. uh, it looks harder, you know it's yeah. really harder and slicker yeah. you know, yeah, it's funny because I was actually on a video call with David this morning getting yeah. tips on how to lift it oh, <laughs> yeah he was trying, because I can't get, get the hang of it it's just the shape that's so awkward, um, so he was teaching me where to put like the palm of your hand a little bit, so yeah, that was good Not yeah. uh, not an easy uh, not an easy grip tool. So not at well, all here. Yeah. We have a couple of questions from the audience, uh, right, which are okay. related. They are related to to this subject. Uh, I don't know if you know Christopher Lindquist. Maybe I I mispronounced the name. His Instagram it's like Klingon something. Yeah, He's from Finland. So, yeah. yeah. He's from Finland, and uh, he wanted to know like. Uh, Tom's thoughts on the collaboration with David Horn and where he thinks it will go it will go from here. Why? Because he would like to have a blob top, like to buy a blob top. And yeah. this is one for myself as well. Uh, I like I'd like to have a classic Euro pinch from the UK yeah. and oh, he wants yeah. as well. So uh, how is it gonna work? Yeah, we're slowly getting around to uh to making everything obviously with our competition schedule getting really busy with it's crazy how much we've had to sort of make more stuff and it's hard to keep on top of it all and then make a load of new things as well but we started off with like that we made the half pennies the stubs the horn tops the fence posts um and then we've got all the parts for the moon tops and the glob tops we just need to make them <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah. so this is walking. It's walking, and yeah, then it yeah, will be coming. running. <laughs> yeah, and definitely the Euro pinch. That's one I really would like. We don't have one here, and it's one where I feel like it, it levels the playing field for a lot of competitions. Where because everyone's hands are different, and this has been one of the difficult things for us to do in competition. I feel like someone has always got an advantage. It might be the guys with bigger hands. It might be the guys with smaller hands. So the Euro pinch just takes that out because you can pick what's what width you want and it levels the playing field more. So yeah, definitely a Euro pinch. Perfect. And I think this question comes comes like a closer from you, from <laughs> Pinch Princess XX. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she wants to know what is your favorite grip lift. Oh. A difficult one that it's definitely something pinch um is it boring if i say blobs <laughs> no not at all yeah, yeah blobs i just love doing stupid things with them <laughs> i feel like that's what you can do throw them from hand to hand try and clean them curl them you know there's a couple of guys in america that are really into that kind of thing as well so yeah i enjoy yeah. watching that regarding blobs in the uk Uh, is there like uh, easy to find the uh, blobs in the UK? Because I remember like maybe one year ago or something, uh, you had stock uh, of yeah, blobs yeah. in your page. Yeah. And I was like, oh, there must be like many like jerk dumbbells full and not yeah. cut yet to make blobs. Is it is it common to, to find those to, to make no, blobs this, or, or is it hard? It's, I reckon since probably 2018 i've been on the lookout <laughs> for these york dumbbells and we only ever find a handful really and this one time i managed to find a gym selling a whole set of pairs so that's where we got four sets of blobs basically um i ended up trading one row for some really rare tetting hand grippers the short ones i think it's like a one of one set then we sold one row and we kept Two, two of the rows for ourselves to use but they're so rare to come by and if we do find them now we won't put them on the website we'll just let people know that we know want them if that makes sense well because well it is hard it is like uh, 
I mean, I have two blobs, like a half 100 and a half 110 legacies. Nice. And it was like, thanks to my American friends, uh, because yeah. otherwise I didn't, yeah. I will not have the chance. And if I find something on eBay, it would be like 200 so more dollars expensive. than yeah. the, the actual price. Yeah. Plus shipping, plus yeah. tax. So crazy, crazy, crazy yeah. to, to get ridiculous. one. Yeah, it is. It's crazy, and that's sort of the unfortunate thing about the business now. Like we get charged tax for selling things, so I almost feel like we've got to sell them expensive to cover the you know the cost of buying them now, because a lot more people know the value of them as well. So you can't necessarily buy them cheap anymore. Um, haven't you all just released the new Legacy dumbbells? Have you uh, seen? I, I I saw I saw them, but. But man, they are different. They look like they look, yeah. without the straight the side. It's like the, now they are both like curved. It's it's not yeah. the same, you know. In my no, opinion, it's not. So that means these are gonna get even rarer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so is, yeah. stick to them. Like it's yeah. it's like it's like the thing that uh, Joe Hodgson from Australia and Zach Mullin said. It's like yeah. Zach is going to go to the tomb with with their blocks. Yeah, like yeah. bury me with my blocks. Literally. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it now. We're keeping all these. With the blobs and with the inch dumbbells. So it's going yeah, to be a, yeah. a heavy one. A, uh, yeah. There's a second question from Pinch Princess XX. What kind of carryover does Greek training provide for arm wrestling? <laughs> That's a good one, actually. Um, so I've been training with Paul Maiden, who's one of the best ever British arm wrestlers. Again, he just lives local to me, so I feel dead lucky that I get to sort of go and train with these people at his club and learn from him. And he's a big one for not believing that grip carries over to arm wrestling. <laughs> um, but it definitely does. I can notice my it's finger strength where I've noticed it a lot. And where I've noticed a weakness is in the wrist so there's obviously a lot of wrist strength in arm wrestling, but I feel like pinch, <clears throat> sorry, is a massive help in arm wrestling because it just helps me, you know, contain hands a bit more with my finger strength. And one of the best guys in arm wrestling at the moment, James Stewart, he's like another huge guy from Scotland. Um, I'm, I'll have to send you this because it'll blow your mind. <laughs> he closed a Captain's of Crush three and a half with no oh. set. He oh, just closed it's it. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. He's a guy that I only met recently. And I always thought he's one of them that's, you know, he's up in his numbers a little bit. He's saying he can do this and do that. But then when I met him, I realized he's not lying at all. <laughs> so oh, it's so crazy. Yeah. Um, but it's a diff difficult one, really. It's definitely finger strength. So I think pinch will help. But you need a lot of wrist strength as well. Yes. And... I want to jump into like the objectives or challenges of gods of grip uh, in the future. Yeah. What would you like to accomplish with the company? Yeah, it's it's an interesting one because I never really thought we'd get to this point. I never thought this is sort of my job. It's such a crazy thing. Um, it, it like literally blows my mind because it's just something I enjoy so much and I have such a passion for this sport and I just want to get more people involved in it like meeting people like yourself it's amazing to see you now sort of spreading it out in Chile and making all these amazing different tools and that's it it's just get more people involved and have fun doing it keep making all these weird and wonderful grip tools you know I feel like I'm leaning more towards silly things these days like I like making little tiny things that are hard to lift or printing off some stupid traffic cones or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's it really for me. It's just building the community around this sport and growing it more. Like I know next year, what I really want to do is build like a UK team and challenge different countries. So we might say like the UK takes on Finland. So I'd pick five athletes here and take them all over to Finland and we'll have a competition and like battle it out kind of thing. So that's short term, I guess. That sounds really amazing. And actually I yeah. wanted to know, like, uh, I think Russia had like a world championship, like in 2019 yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Do you have like in your in your I mean goals or dreams to have like hey 200 countries of the world come to the UK to this championship of grip? Would you like to do that, do that in the in the future? Yeah, that's 100% what I'd love to do. We get people from all over asking to come to our competitions. And it's difficult really because most of them don't have that much prize money uh, because we only keep them quite small like The ones we host here are shed. We tried to cap at like 25 people. Whereas the Grip League, we had 117 people enter <clears throat> this year. And then we've invited 47 to the final, which is cool. So we're host, we're like renting a venue because we won't fit everyone here. So that's kind of the test to see if we can handle that many people at once. So if it all goes well in the next couple of weeks, then we can look at sort of expanding it more. We've managed to get a load of sponsors on board this year, you know, giving prizes away, which again sort of entices people in. Oh, maybe I'll have a go at Griff. I might see how good I am. Um, but yeah, it's just growing it, and hopefully, a big international competition would be amazing because it's good to test ourselves against each other. But we know who's kind of the best now. We're working out, you know, the best guys. So it'd be good to get some new faces in and compare ourselves against them. Perfect. And tell me, like, personally, yourself, which are your goals as an athlete, like these days? Because I know that you manage the company, you manage the social media, you are the host of the competition. So do you have any space to, like, uh, I mean, you have to juggle everything to also be an yeah. athlete and be competitive. So what would you like to accomplish as a group athlete? That is a, a really good question. So When I first started, obviously, I was into it. Um, I didn't really have responsibilities, let's say. I was just working a normal job. So I could kind of go to the gym after work, train for three hours if I wanted almost. And that's when I really just dedicated my life to training. And, you know, that was it really. And then sort of as I got more into the business side, I I dedicated my all my time to that and obviously – still working a full-time job, I'd work my job and then I'd be up all night working, maybe writing a blog or just doing a bit of research on stuff, packing orders. Um, so I kind of neglected my training and maybe three years, I, I sort of lost the passion for training. I'd keep trying to get back into it and I'd really struggle to find the motiva motivation because I was always thinking about something else. So I'd maybe have a week where I'd train really well, but I never really had that sort of driving force behind me to to do well, even though that's where my passion started. So since January this year, I've really taken like a step back almost and just tried to focus more on building myself. And I feel like I'm in such a better mental place now than I was. You can get so bogged down in business and worrying about everything Because as you'll know, it's a lot of pressure, especially when it's just you, you know. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is don't worry about the small stuff. Think about yourself. Think about what you want to do. And what I want to do is lift weight and lift all these stupid, stupid implements and have fun while doing it. So this year, I've really got back into it a lot more. And I feel like I've reignited the fire, I guess you could say. And, you know, I've really got my passion back for training again. And I'm enjoying it. So it's good. I feel much better as a person. And I feel like I've been a lot more productive with work as well, which is a good thing. Yes. And, and I can imagine it's like, well, I feel like, uh, like maybe reflected of what could be of my, like of myself in a couple of years, if I keep developing <laughs> groups yeah, for Latino, yeah. because right Definitely. now it's pretty small. You know, I can manage everything, but yeah. pressure can be like higher uh, when the community yeah. grows. Uh, the well, there are yeah. expectations. They are like uh, thrash talk and yeah, small yeah. things that they can yeah. like <laughs> make everything like more blurry. You know, yeah. so it, it's like uh, man, it, it's a good advice you you give me for for growing yeah. the sport because it's yeah. it's a big it's a big like uh, burden 
that you carry and maybe well maybe your partner knows it perfectly but maybe your teammates yeah. don't know that you have to think about everything you do the designs it, you, yeah. you 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 i mean you make the grip the grip tools you make like the the whole event you yeah. <laughs> I, i am i am sure you make sure like um, to every everyone to have good food good, good coffee or good tea anything so it's yeah. a lot to manage yeah it's, it's a lot. it is like when you actually think about it i have to sort of remind myself okay we've done quite a lot of good stuff here let's try and take some credit but i i feel like i was at least very hard on myself and that's sort of where my, my training took such a dive and You know, I just found myself working, 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 where really, if you focus on the things that make you happy, it's going to make you more productive with your work as well. And that's what I feel like I've got a lot better at now. So it's it, like, it's just a growing process for like you as a person and learning all these things along the way. And, you know, it's it's cool to look back at sort of the journey that we've we've come on now. And I'm just really enjoying it and trying to, put as much back into the sport as I can and just keep growing it. Perfect. I want to like move outside the UK for a little moment because, okay. well, when I started into grip, I saw everything from, from the US, like the captains of crash grippers, iron mine stuff, uh, maybe some FBBC stuff. Arm assassin okay. was born during those days and in yeah. parallel, I knew about David Horn. I bought yeah. my, myself a couple of like epic tools that, that I think right now they are going to be like pieces of collection. The yeah. the the penny, like the training penny. <laughs> yeah, I have one, and I have one one of the Vulcan two grippers. Oh, and wow. and I was like, man, I was about to sell my Vulcan gripper in the past, no and and now it's a piece of history. So never selling it ever. Yeah. So. Uh, I noticed that in the UK, like like David always had like his own thing for everything, like his own grippers, his own pinch devices, his own vertical vice, uh, vertical bar devices and stuff. So, uh, well, I I know that you are pushing like your own stuff, like the the old British tools and grip test, which is awesome. Uh, but in example. Have you considered uh, participating into the King Kong Grip Challenge, like uh, which which is international, expensive one because you have to invest in the on the grip tools? But have you considered that? Yeah, we were going to do it last year, um, but like I sort of mentioned, I wasn't in the right head space. Let's say you know, I did try and do a bit of training for it, and we were going to host one here, but we just couldn't like, I know now we, I think we've pretty much got everything. Like we've got the crusher, the finish ball, a little big horn, you know, all those sort of things are quite common in it. Um, but yeah, we definitely love to do that. And it's getting involved more in stuff like that and getting more, a variety of grip tools here because I almost felt like it's difficult to buy them sometimes for like, especially at like the flask, it was almost impossible for us to get one here. Um, it's really strange and um, there's so many people in the UK that want to try these things because we see people using them all the time and it's it's really difficult to get them but I'd love to incorporate more brands and stuff like that it just helps more exposure for them and it's a variety of things that we can put in competitions and use as well so do you think that you could uh, like uh, jump into King Kong this year Maybe or it's not. It's maybe for the next year. What what is it? Think? October. It's in October. Yes, and you have to yeah, have what... the, the the crusher, the crusher blockbuster from Iron Mind, finish ball, yeah. and little big heart. We've got them all, so why not? <laughs> We could definitely do it. I know there's like Ollie would be massively keen for that. Um, but yeah, I, I, well, yeah. Now you've mentioned it. Why not? It's, is it October? Yes, and and I think yeah. you can host it like any weekend in october and the deadline it's like the last weekend like the the halloween weekend so to speak yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. you you can do it there and you don't have to show the the lifts uh, you have yeah. to record every every lift and and that's it it's like 
it's like a small gathering, I think, because you you can't cover everything and people can't upload their lifts b- before they yeah. release everything. Yeah. That's, That's true. A, sort of a challenge because, yeah. in example, uh, uh, we hosted our first competition of uh, Grips for Latino in April and so, everyone yeah. was like uh, uploading the stories and how many kilos <laughs> I made and and the, the pictures of the certificate and all yeah. stuff. So it's it's yeah. hard to, to ask to the... Um, to the guests, so to speak, yeah, yeah. to yeah. remain the, the mouth shut until the, yeah. <laughs> the results are released. <laughs> yeah. So that's sort of similar to what we did with the Grip League. It was a two-month period uh, where the qualifiers were held. I think there was 17 qualifiers. So people were just not... Everyone didn't post anything at all. It was crazy because they're so competitive now. No one posted anything, which... I couldn't believe really, but I did a couple of videos saying like, oh, I think keep your lift secret because you'll give people an advantage if they know, but two months and no one posted anything. So <laughs> crazy. And about the Grip League, I think I knew about the Grip League because of uh, Harley and because of yeah, Sam, yeah. because Sam is participating, I, I understand. And and I was like, oh, Sam, yes, because I I always try to support him. It's like, oh yeah. yes, do you think you are going to win? And he was like, yeah. no, the bar is super high. I I, I think I yeah. I will do well in some events, but some others, I am like uh, not doing well, you know. Yeah. So I wanted to know about this structure because it's a huge contest. Actually, makes me want to travel to the UK and <laughs> and maybe try for an uh, for a yeah. next year because I. Yeah. I understand it is like the league is running like the whole year. How how does it work like the this contest? If you can tell yeah. me. Yeah, so we started it last year, it was the first year, and we basically contacted different gyms around the UK um and messaged them just to see if they'd be interested in hosting a competition. Because we know it's quite a long way for a lot of people to come here we're in Liverpool so it's maybe four hours to go down south or four hours up north or four hours across the country we thought the shawl is a better way where we can get people to qualify in the area and then come to the final if they qualify so I think we had eight different gyms that hosted a qualifier oh I think we had maybe 60 people in total Uh, and then we invited 25 to the final and hosted it here at our shed and it was really good everyone really enjoyed it so this year we sort of announced it again and we actually got gyms contacting us asking to host one this year so we're like wow this is amazing i think there were 16 qualifiers all around the country and 117 competitors which is mad um and then we basically invited the top five people from each weight category so yeah the qualifiers were held april and may and then the final is the 3rd of August. And I wanted to know, uh, which which are the disciplines? Like, do you have to use like, uh, like the only got the gods of grip equipment and for disciplines or are they like 20 disciplines uh, on the <laughs> whole league? How, how does it work? So the qualifiers had four events. Okay. The, the bog standard basic events. It was rolling handle, one-handed pinch lift, a vertical bar hold, and what did we do for the last one? The hub. So, like, the go-to events, we thought, because there's going to be a lot of new people coming into it, we'll pick four events that pretty much every gym's got the equipment for. Um, All the gyms did use our equipment for that because we find most people here don't really have that much of a variety of stuff. So, like, we give it to the gyms for pretty much cost price just to get them sort of involved in it and then the people pay an entry fee they come and do the four events and then we invite the top five into the final um and then the final six events which is going to be interesting um hopefully we can get through them all in a in a quick time but yeah so we've got like a tip tester for the first yes. event then we've got the horn top hold which obviously the world of grip one. Then we have a hand gripper medley, which not everyone's too happy about, but we're doing (laughs) it. Then it's a two-handed 60 mil pinch. Then we've got a rolling handle medley. And then the final event is, of course, a blob medley. (laughs) 
Wow, it sounds like it sounds like a like a full day event, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like a, yeah. a, a a lot of time. I like it. Yeah. So this this is why it's kind of the test. So the way we're going to do it is event one's going to be running, and when someone's finished on event one, they'll just move straight over onto event two, uh, and then event one will still be going. So we can kind of move things along a little bit quicker. So it's going to be like. A... Like with stations, like a yes, CrossFit yeah, medley, yeah. like CrossFit yeah. medley. Like yeah. if, if I if I were like competing, like one, two, three, and then the next yeah. one, and oh, that yeah. that's a pretty efficient system. I like it, and I yeah. am curious. Would you like to uh, have this just in the UK, or maybe maybe from Chile we can participate yeah. in a in a next version? Because yeah. because if it's possible, I like to jump in. You know. Yeah. Well, next year we would like to do. The inter, we'll call it the International Grip League. So Ooh. what we do is we contact, I guess, like the main point of contact for each country. Like obviously yourself would be in Chile. Maybe like we'd speak to Jed in America, like Arto in Finland, and just sort of see if they'd be on board for doing that. Um, I know there's quite a lot of guys in Sweden as well that are keen to do yes. it. So it's sort of, as long as we can get enough prize money for people, it makes it worthwhile for them. You know, if they qualify, let's take the flight over and have a go at this big competition because we want to give people an incentive to join because it's good for growing the sport. It's going to get more people into it. So we're trying to give prize money away, getting sponsors on board. Like even yourself, you could give away, you know, a few things for the guys that win your competition. It's just cool like that. And I feel like it's just going to keep getting more people involved and hopefully we can make it work. Man, if you do it, I mean, just let me know, yeah, and and amazing. I am in, and my guys are going to, well, they will like it anyway. Team, and, yeah. and imagine, imagine we can like qualify to compete in the UK, man, <laughs> man, yeah. that's a that's a dream because there's so much to do in grip over there. Yeah. So count on me for that. And I I have a, a another like miscellaneous question because <laughs> since you are in the UK, uh. Have you lifted the Dini Stones or do you plan on doing it like eventually? <laughs> That's another funny one. We get asked that all the time. And <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I've, no, we've never done it. And we know so many people that live up that way. Um, ne again, next year, we want to take like a little team up and do a stone tour of Scotland. That's one of the ideas we have. We'll maybe get 10 or 15 people and we'll just all go up there visit a few of the different sites, lift the Dinny Stones, and I think that would be really cool. Excellent. So, yeah. well, I, it, that's one of my goals in the future. Actually, yeah. I told Sam, uh, like, uh, <laughs> last year, uh, like, Sam, if I go to the UK, would you go with me to lift the Dinny's? And he was like, yes, come and we do it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if he is. could at the moment, because he's having trouble with his lat, isn't he? Uh, I think it, yes, I think he did. Sadly, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's it's a big one. It's something to get off the bucket list, isn't it? Yeah. It's uh it's like um it's something that you must do like if you have the capabilities. Uh, yeah. the same as with the like full stir core stunts from Iceland. Yeah, yeah. You no, know? yeah. like, like like the, yeah. the Husafell and yeah. and well the UK has many stones to lift, like um, the Inverse stone. I don't remember all the names, but uh, it's yeah. like a cool trip to take. So, yeah. man, re record, now, yeah. record everything. Because, well, before jumping into, like, questions from you to me, I wanted to, like, uh, give my reaction to your podcast. Because, man, okay. I do this podcast online. And, well, yeah. I know it's not the best cal quality out there, but, but man your show it's like wow i was like really? man, like like feeling like having a coffee there with you and your first guest becca roberts such a yeah. legend of this part oh, no. man i, th I, I think her. she's i think she's like less known that she should be you know yeah. because i i remember he could close a number three right maybe yeah yeah she's definitely done two and a half maybe a really deep set three yeah but it's quite a fit. I, I I think I think I I I don't recall any other female athlete yet closing a three even deep set. It's huge. No, yeah, it, she's so strong. Um, 
it's crazy. Again, we're so lucky. We live like literally 15 minutes away from Becca. So her and Laura are quite good friends. So we get to, she takes us to a lot of the strongman shows. Um, and she, she doesn't get recognized as much as you think. It's, it's mad. Like we'll be walking around sometimes and she'll get a few funny looks because she's so tall, but a lot of people don't know who she is and it's just mad. She's a great athlete and super strong. Oh, and yeah, and also, also, I wanted to recognize the live challenges of the show. <laughs> They are like brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Like the dynamometer and lifting yeah. the blobs. It was like, yeah. man, please keep them coming because I, I want to be like uh, one of the, like there with the popcorn watching it on, on my TV. <laughs> It's like, man, super good. If If I had like more grip legends, Uh, like all group legends here in Chile, I will do the same, like with a, a yeah. studio, good mics and uh, all my setup. But right in the meantime, we have like a, our online setup. But man, yeah. watching a show it. like that, it's like class. Yeah. It's excellent. Oh, so you. I was so nervous about posting it. I'm like, I'm really? quite, yeah, hmm. I'm like quite a shy guy or I really was like really nervous about speaking to people And that's sort of a side of the business, I guess, that I've okay. learned and sort of grown myself. Like, I think we filmed that in at the start of January, and it took really? me like so long to post it because I was really nervous about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't look you don't look nervous at all on the episode, and the quality <laughs> is 10 out of 10. So keep them coming. We really like it. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. I think we've done five so far. So yeah. Excellent. I, I was watching, well, I wanted to like recognize you, your YouTube channel as well. I would, I would love to do like such high quality videos. Right now I just have my cell phone. So I would love to like get a better cell phone or a camera to have like <laughs> yeah. a really true video vlogs, like the one that you did with Oliver with the pinch. Yeah. Well, that was I just was, like, on my phone. Yeah. I, I oh, was yeah, like, yeah. dude, dude, it was really good. And, and man, uh, well, anyway, Uh, Tommy, do you happen to have any question for me or, or for the Grips for Latino project? I mean, shoot anything you want. I, I, I'd like to be like quick on my feet, you know? Yeah. So I just wanted to ask you, how did you first get into Grip? Well, uh, long story short, I, I, did, I play sports all my life. I did like team sports, volleyball, yeah. golf, tennis, basketball, football, and got into strength sports because i started doing track and field right like in, in my last years on high school then i got into the gym like obsessed with bench press because i wanted yeah. to bench more and like such yeah. a similar story with you yeah, yeah you know then in college i started doing some calisthenics i really liked it nice. like because it's a flexible sport you can do it wherever you are as yeah. long as there is a deep bar and pull-up bar yeah. and then Uh, I I noticed that my bench press increased with calisthenics and I always okay. had like this little bug of uh, doing some powerlifting. And in nice. 2016, I did powerlifting. I managed to compete in a South American championship with, with this like a huge, like uh, a great moment of my life. It was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, epic. Uh, but I didn't want it to go any further than the South American because uh, I had to dedicate more, more time to, to the college because it was my like third year of career. Oh, so okay, yeah. then it became like a little harder to train like four, six hours a day yeah. from Monday to Saturday. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a friend of mine. Uh, of that time that told me hey you should uh, try some grip uh, he's <laughs> actually actually bruno maybe maybe you know him he visited nathan he he's into right. arm lifting arm lifting usa oh, okay. and that type yeah. of contest and he told me hey you should try some grip and it was like no i am still focused on my power lifting and on december 2017 coming back from the south american i was like hey you were telling me about this grip thing tell me more and He helped me to to buy the loading pin, a uh, rolling handle, and the uh, 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 the pinch block and the V bar, and yeah. I was like, yeah, let's test this out. And <laughs> to my standards, I was not like particularly strong on all the lifts, but according to what the uh, Bruno had tested, uh, 
it was good to do 50 kilogram on a 63 millimeter uh, rolling handle, according yeah. to him. And I pulled 60 kilograms on the first <laughs> try. And I was like, oh, this is something. Yeah. And I tried to put some kilos on that. And the good thing was that I could uh, uh, train this discipline in my house whenever yeah. I wanted. And I need like uh, just a one meter squ uh, square of uh, yeah. like padding or something or, or a, an old pillow. Yeah. And since I, well, I like speaking and reading English, everything. So I noticed that on Instagram, you could check like grip all over the world. And that was yeah. so interesting to me. And I got like uh, down into the rabbit hole instantly. I was like, oh, this this guy's in Finland, in Russia, in yeah. Ukraine, uh, in the UK, um, yeah. Canada, etc. And I was like researching everything. And then I started to knock the doors of everyone. <laughs> And everyone was super like uh, generous to, yeah. I mean, how do you progress on rivers? Hey, you can do this. Da, 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 da. And they send the list of what to do yeah. to progress. Back in the day, there was not much like available information or guides yeah. or, or how to train if you didn't know how to. So you had to knock the doors. And I think like 99% of the doors I knocked was generous enough to, to tell me what to do, uh, where to buy, or if someone was like uh, reliable or not. I remember a couple of guys from... This was in 2021, by the way, but a couple of, of guys from Newcastle upon Tyne, they, they knew yeah. some. Uh, oh, he yeah, was yeah. like uh, Travis Slater and Kevin and Kevin. Yeah, a man, yeah. Uh, a man called Kev. Uh, maybe you know, yeah. you know how on Instagram. Yeah. And I was like, hey, do you know some? Is he a good coach? And they were like, he's the best, go with him. Yeah. And then I started working with Sam and my PRs went like through the yeah. roof. Um, from 2018 to 2021, I trained by myself and with some advice of people online. Uh, but I got like a, a huge plateau, especially yeah. in grippers. So I was like just doing experiment, trial and error. I have two big injuries on my fingers. So it was like maybe not a linear progression, but I had this great desire to know more on hey what's the deal with the the people in the uk in yeah. ukraine in russia in the us i wanted yeah. to travel there and yeah. that's how i got involved i started investing like since i was in college not without much money on myself yeah. but every penny i had I wanted yeah. to invest it in rivers, in having yeah, a yeah, handle, yeah. loading pins and all that stuff. And when I started working, I started investing more and more on official equipment for King Kong or for yeah. online challenges on, on blobs. And that's yeah. where we are. Yeah. And that's how I got hooked into it. It's, it's such a similar journey to me. It's crazy, really. Yeah, I remember training on like this tiny little square mat and a little bit of carpet in my shed just because you can, you know, because it's so simple. You don't need much room. You can just do it and close your hand grippers anywhere. Exactly. So yeah. it's super good and, and it's super fun, especially if you do it yeah. with friends. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. who can lift yeah. this one? And yeah. then you, you lift something and you miss Whoa, and everyone's screaming. It's like at least we do yeah. that in Chile. It's like wow, that's, you that's missed. It. It's the try again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It just brings out this like competitive side in people, and it's just so much fun and so weird. <laughs> it's it's great. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much it. That's Amazing. that's how I got into it, and I I hope to stick with it like uh, for a long time. Maybe because yeah. I, there are more things I, I'd like to accomplish and that I haven't. So, yet. I haven't. I haven't had the time to for a, for an inch tumble for for anyway. What were you about to say, Tommy? So now that you've hosted your first competition, yes. How how was it? Was it? Did you enjoy it? Did you find it stressful? Did you feel like you learned some like stuff from that? Well, uh, personally, I I wanted to have like international. Well, one of my missions is that. In the other countries of the world, they can know that we are doing grip here and yeah. that we want to be good. 
and yeah. like have a respectable level. You yeah, know, we're coming for you. Basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. like I wanted. To, there's a there's a movie with Willem Dafoe. Do you like movies, Tommy? Yeah. There's a movie with, with Willem Dafoe where where he acts like a Van Gogh, the painter. Right. You yeah. know, and it, there's an audio on TikTok and on Reels that uh, it's like I just want to be one of them. You know, <laughs> and I just want to be one of them when I see everything on Grip internationally. So yeah. I was checking my my chances, and in the US there is Arm Lifting USA and GSI, yeah. Yeah. and GSI it's uh, cheaper than Arm Lifting USA. So yeah. I took that path and. Uh, yeah like gather all the information and email Eric Roussein from Canada. Yeah. And he was like uh, an expert juggling everything, like having yeah. four kids, having a full-time job, organizing world contests. And yeah. he is like with a big smile on his face. <laughs> and I was like, man, I have never hosted a competition and have the food and the accommodation, the venue, etc. And I started like, I was like, worried uh, about uh, having everything running well yeah. uh, my partner helped me like man you can imagine like uh, with yeah. everything and it runs smoothly it it went well we could like uh, fulfill our the schedule with the yeah. with the venue and it was great man it was great we yeah. were like 11 athletes i Amazing. i did like five Five man job, you can say, because yeah, I was holding yeah. the bar. I was being a yeah. judge when I was not competing. I was explaining everything to everyone because there there were a lot of new people. Uh, if the crossbar fell in any attempt, I went there to fix it and yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> and considering all of that, I could manage to win the whole competition and do PRs, <laughs> mostly no because I am the oldest here in the sport. Yeah. And because I, I had the chance to go to the U.S. in 2022 and go to a contest. So I had that experience as an example. Yeah. That was a life-changing experience because it was super cool. And I was inspired and motivated to it. So it went well. Actually, we are going to have our second contest in, in one month. Amazing. Oh, awesome. It's That's going so to be cool. called the, the Grip for Latino Classic. And it also have, has four events. Rolling handle, pinch, bivar, and finish ball. So you can't beat it. You can't beat it. It's like a, yeah. the bread and butter, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to be a practice for King Kong because we are hosting King nice. Kong. Actually, oh, we did a fun a, a fundraiser for the King Kong. Uh, so King Kong was paid because because of the people that support groups for Latinos. So man, awesome. everything has been like running smoothly these years. Yeah. This year, like uh, speaking about grip, so yeah. it was a great experience, and I hope to continue hosting, continue participating, and well, being an athlete, a competitive athlete, <laughs> on the same yeah. time, which is hard. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I want to do it. You know. <laughs> yeah, that is the hard part. Luckily for our next one, because I'm competing as well, we've got quite a lot of people that are going to be like we've got three referees, uh, oh. three scorers, and then we've got people loading as well. So. Hopefully, I can take a little bit of a, a step back and focus yeah. on the lifts. Hopefully, yeah, that that's that's a good one because well, in in this next championship, I I already have a, a scorer like a, yeah. a really a friend of mine who's into sport and who's going to be like uh, he's not going to receive any money from any from everyone yeah, to yeah. change the score sheet. Yeah, so that's a good one I, I i hope someone to to load the the loading pin uh, the we, have to, we have to get one because yeah. otherwise my lower bag is going to die yeah on that day. <laughs> yeah literally yeah so yeah. good things are coming for for grips for latina uh, hoping and good uh, good things for gods of grip in the future <laughs> as well yeah. hoping so like man you are like I, I always say to my, I studied business in college and I, I tell my friends, man, God's of Grip has one of the best digital marketing strategies out there in the grip <laughs> really? like uh, shops or businesses. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. It's crazy. It's just, yeah. I don't know. I just enjoy it and I enjoy trying to 
do all these different things and it's just learning and just having a go isn't it and like you said you're now sort of learning all these things and doing all these things and it's really cool obviously I'm always happy to sort of help you give you any advice if you ever wanted anything you know I'm an open book <laughs> I I will I will knock your door for that because uh, we we always have some like Uh, questions like what to do in example yesterday we were with in our in our park sessions and some of some of the guys uh, had a like a skin turn uh, yeah. with the flask and i was oh, like yeah. oh man and this is an actual question for you if you are competing and someone turns skin on the on the flask and yep. then there's blood on the grip tool and yeah. well there's one of your athletes wounded what do yep. you do i mean Maybe he can type the the wound and carry on with the competition. And would you have to use like a hand sanitizer for the grip tool? What do you do? You know, in that well, situation, it, <laughs> it's a funny one because at my first grip competition, I tore my thumb on the meat hook deadlift, which was the first event, and I was bleeding loads. I was like, "Oh my god, what do I do?" And David just said, "Pack it with chalk and carry on." <laughs> So Whoa. there that, we that go. So <laughs> that's the motto I live by now. Anyone cuts the hand, pack it with chalk. We'll just wipe the equipment off and carry on. <laughs> that's it. Excellent. So I learned from the best. So that's the advice. Yeah, just pack it with chalk. Excellent. Tell me, the last words belong to you. Which message or final words would you like to share with the audience? of the whole world to finish with this lovely interview? I think the best one is sort of what I touched on before. It's sort of don't get caught up in the small stuff. Don't, it's so easy to overthink everything these days and get worried and get bogged down about everything. You've just got to keep going, do the stuff that makes you happy and it'll sort of bring everything back up with you. Or at least that it worked for me. Excellent. So, Thanks, everyone, for tuning in for this interview. This is the last episode of season four. So we are going to have a little hiatus to rest and to host our competition. But we are coming back with season five soon. And Tommy, thanks again for all your work and for, for your flexibility on the, the schedule. <laughs> People don't know, but we had like a, a little misunderstanding with the AM, PM. <laughs> So thanks for your patience. Thanks for your for your time. It, I had a good time chatting with you. And I am going to knock your door in the future for the Grip League or for yeah, some advice. Definitely. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. It's been really nice to get to know more about you and learn about how you're sort of growing the sport. And it's really cool. Excellent. So stay tuned for further episodes and bye, all my friends. <laughs>